Hello and welcome back for another dose of Dude's Carnival Goodness. I'm Jason the Dude. This is my weekly video where I review the latest comic books that I've picked up. I review the latest episode of the TV show Arrow. And I just share with you some of the good stuff I found in comics this week. So, um, as always, we're going to kick this bad boy off with some reviews. Um, this time last year, you know, the week before Christmas... Um, we have the big week where you get almost like two weeks worth of comics released in the one week. Uh, last year I bought 21 comics on, on this time. So, um, yeah, it was pretty insane. Uh, 21 comics, that was a lot to get through. Um, so, like, this year I was interested to see how many it would be because I've kind of really tried to cut down my books, picking up a lot more in trade now and just kind of been a bit more what single issues I buy I'm a bit more picky um, so but like last couple of weeks I've kind of felt like my numbers have been climbing up again the amount of books I'm getting uh, are kind of mounting up again so I, I was looking forward to this week as a kind of a barometer of where I'm at um, and I think I'm pretty pleased with where I'm at um, as I only picked up nine books this week um, four books from Marvel Comics four books from Image Comics and one book from DC Comics. So yeah, all in all, um, I'm really pleased with that. Um, so yeah, so without further ado, um, let's get to the review of those nine comics. So, first up this week, we have Black Science, issue number two from Image Comics. Uh, this was a book I was really looking forward to. I love Rick Remender's Marvel stuff, but I'd never read his, his indie stuff. So I was really excited to see what his non-superhero stuff would be like. And two issues in, I'm hooked. This has been absolutely fantastic. Last issue we kind of got that they've broken through reality and to another dimension. But um, this issue we get more about that, about how they got this device. Um, also we learn that the device has been sabotaged. So they can't control where they jump to and how long they're going to stay there. So it kind of has that quantum leap sliders kind of vibe where they're going to these different realities but are always hoping that the next leap will be the leap home. We get to meet the whole team this time and we get to see some of the characters and the dynamics and relationships between the characters. Some of them seem to have a few secrets which is going to be interesting. Um, my favourite character coming out of this issue um, was definitely Ward. He seems a really interesting character and uh, I, I really took to him. Some characters they seem like they're jerks, but it seems like they're meant to be jerks. That that's what they are. Uh, but the story itself, I really enjoyed. Um, it kept me really engrossed from beginning to end. And you know, Image have been doing some really great books lately. Usually, it takes me three issues before I commit long term to a series. But with Black Science, two issues in, and I'm hooked, and I'm definitely in it for the long haul. So, in conclusion, another really strong issue. If you like um, Quantum Leap or t or Sliders, um, then this is definitely a well worth book to get. Or if you even just like your science fiction, this is a really good book. And I give Sliders, issue number two, five stars. So, next up, we have our loan DC offering this week. Trinity Sea and Pandora, issue number six. Uh, this is the next part of the Forever Evil Blight storyline, and this this was a definitely an improvement from last week's uh, part, and also was probably the most um, I found myself in kind of relating to the character of Pandora. I think out of the Trinity sin, I found her to be the weakest character, and I haven't always really really cared much about her, but this issue does a really good job of making me really care for her, and not just care for her, but root for her. Um, I thought this issue was really well done. Yeah, it's a Pandora issue, so you expect it to be more Pandora-centric. But the other members um, of our group also are a big part of the story. As we get to see big things happening for Swamp Thing and Nightmare Nurse and John Constantine and Phantom Stranger. So that was really good. Um, the story feels like it moves forward as well. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how, it, how we're going to move on from where this ends up. Uh, but this was a, a really enjoyable issue. And... 
uh, if Pandora keeps being this good, I might buy this beyond the, this storyline. Um, however, the art, we have two artists, and I did feel it took me a bit out of the book, um, as you have a little shift, and I didn't understand why the one artist had to come in for, like, I think it was, like, four pages. Um, so I, I don't know why DC do that so much. It really disrupts the flow. Unless you have two artists who are so, like, like each other, um, or you have it in the, something in the story that kind of works for that. I, I think it, it really can take you out of the story, so that was bad. Um, I, I am concerned long term. I didn't realize this story was going to go until March. So that's like four comics a month until March. I think if I'd have known the Blight storyline was going to be that long, I may not have jumped on board it. Um, but I'm in now, so I'm going to see where this goes. But I am concerned because I know uh, reading books from Marvel, whenever they've done the long miniseries or crossovers, you kind of get um, to like about eight and you feel the story's been a bit stretched. Um, so I think a shorter story is better. Um, so I don't know how this is going to kind of really keep going for over all those months until March. Um, I, I am concerned about that. Um, but otherwise, I, I really enjoyed this issue of Pandora and I give it uh, four stars. So next up this week, we have FF issue number 15 from Marvel Comics. Uh, this is the penultimate issue before this series finishes. Um, as always with this book, I love that, that cover there, so bright and colourful. And inside, the art inside is just the same. Mike Aldridge's art I really enjoy, and Laura Aldridge's colours as well are just fantastic. They're so vibrant, and it, you just look at the book and you can't help but smile just flicking through the book. Uh, it just fills you with that joy. So I always love the art in this book. The story is really good as well. I'm really loving how these last couple of issues, Ant-Man is coming into his own as the leader of the, the Fantastic Four. And that's really good. Um, as always, you know, for me with this book, the kids steal the show. Uh, Bentley is my particular favourite and he does really great here. And there's some really funny moments. And, and that's the thing that this book really manages to really combine so well. It's that sense of peril and danger but at the, and that dark undercurrent. But at the same time, it's a really fun book and enjoyable book. And will put a smile on your face. So, um, yeah, I've re this was a really strong issue. The end really leave me eager for the next edition. And, uh, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed this one. And this was um, a book I came to and... Um, I, I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I did this week and yeah it was a really joyous issue and definitely if you've been buying this book it's definitely worth one worth getting as um, it, it's great to see like I said uh, the Ant-Man coming into his own and I give FF issue number 15 5 stars. So next up we have Fantastic Four issue number 15 from Marvel Comics. And very much like FF, this is the penultimate issue of this book before it gets uh, before it finishes. The, they are going to relaunch this one though with a new creative team. And with that in mind, it does feel very much like they've given up on this book. Um, it's kicked off with the superstar team of Matt Fraction writing with Mark Bagley and art. And now we've got two people writing and doing the art that I've never heard of. And that's no disrespect to them. But it's just like, it, to me, it does feel like they've given up on this book and I'm more concentrating on the, when, when it's going to be relaunched. The story itself, um, I liked that we do get answers, that it does feel like it's connected to what came before. And we get answers into like why, you know, what happened at the beginning when the book first started with the, di with the dinosaur, as well as kind of what happens with their powers and why their powers weren't working so that was really cool um, I don't quite understand this world that they're in while I do love out on realities I don't really understand why some heroes aren't around and some are that doesn't really make much sense to me because um, they just seem to pull heroes out of their hats occasionally when they need them and then the rest of the time there ain't really nobody else around the ending I did find a bit predictable um, and but it was where the book needed to go I wasn't 100% on the art, I felt I felt there were some good panels here, there's one panel where Doctor Doom looks really badass, but for me when it comes to the Fantastic Four, it's always how, if whether you can draw the thing, if you're going to be a Fantastic Four artist, you need to be able to do the thing, and I don't think um, the artist did the thing justice here, uh, at all, maybe yet yeah, you could kind of make an argument, he's just getting his powers back, so he isn't going to be 
the same looking thing as we used to. It's going to be more like the original when he first got his powers. It's going to be more like that. And yeah, you can make an argument for that. But even so, I still wasn't happy with how the thing was drawn. And for me, that's always a big thing when you're going to be an artist on the book. Um, so yeah, so very much, I my feelings for this book are very much like Marvel feelings towards this book in that I'm looking forward to change Robertson coming on board and writing it rather than looking forward to how this is all going to end up um, which is a shame uh, because it did start off with so much promise but I give issue number 15 of the Fantastic Four three stars so next up we have from Image Comics we have 10 grand issue number 6 uh, one of my favorite new series of 2013 and this issue is, just keeps the pay, keeps the good run going. Um, the story of this issue is Joe still trying to find Laura and he's going deeper into hell. And he's in this part of hell now where he's kind of forgotten who he is and he's just reliving these, this, this one thing he has to do over and over. Uh, he does meet in potential new ally. Along the way we get uh, to learn a bit more about Joe's past, which I really like how they're doing that. How we didn't just get his whole life story in one go. How we're getting a little bit more all the time. And I think the more we get, the more of a sympathetic character Joe Fitzgerald becomes. Um, I, I enjoyed this issue. The art does have an otherworldly quality to it. That I think works for the phase of the story we're in. I did find the one bit um, where they fight the Seraphim to be a bit confusing at first. Um, when you know I look, we looked at it, I did manage to get my way through it, but it's certainly initially looking at that scene, it did confuse me a bit. Uh, but other than that, I like the art. Um, yeah, and I'm, this just remains one of my favourite books of the year. Um, really top-notch book. They're bringing out the trade soon. If you've not been reading it, I well, well recommend picking up the trade and uh, getting on board with what's been for me one of the best books of 2013 I give 10 grand issue number 6 4 stars so next up we have a voice in the dark issue number 2 from image comics um, to recap for you those of you that haven't heard of this book it is about um, a girl called Zoe Aaron and she has killed someone and she has always is thinking about killing people and she tries to control this urge by by letting her dark side out to host this radio show called voice in the dark where people can phone up anonymously and make confessions and she's hoping that this is going to be her her kind of way to kind of let the dark side out without resorting to killing people and the last issue ended with the big cliffhanger where somebody phones in and says oh i'm going to kill myself um, I reread issue one the other day, which I loved, and rereading it, the one thing that struck me that I didn't mention, I think, in my review last time, is I, I've worked with people who hear voices, and I know one of the coping techniques that are given to people who hear voices is that they are, they are asked to like kind of make an appointment with their voice, to tell their voice, you can come out at this time and I will, t I will listen to you then, uh, but not before this time. And that's very much what Zoe's doing here. She's got this dark voice in her head and she's trying to get control of it by allowing it out at certain times. And that's a very real technique that is used and it, that, it just adds that extra realism to the book for me. Um, as much with the last issue, I really love the character of Zoe Allen, really empathise with her. I'm a bit awkward socially so I can really empathise with that and having your, like, your, your area where you can come out of yourself and feel confident and comfortable um, I can really relate to her character and for her need in that. The other thing I really like about her character is, yes, she has these dark thoughts, but she's not a dark person, she's not an evil person, she's not a nasty person. Um, she doesn't come from an abusive home, she, you know, and I, those are all the things that I, I really like that, about the book. Um, the, the, this issue deals mainly with the person who wants to commit suicide, as she's talking to her. And I really like the whole structure of the issue and how it works. I like the whole, that, that it's kind of like we're reading a diary. And I like that kind of uh, way that it's written. Um, I love uh, Uncle um, uh, Ezekiel, is it? I think he's a really cool character as well. And I just really like the whole makeup of our main characters. Um, I'm really intrigued to see where this is going to go. There was a really great twist in here I didn't see coming that I really enjoyed. 
and I just think as a whole I think this this book has just been a breath of fresh air um, really different I think if you enjoy the horror movie genre or you enjoy stuff like Scream or Dexter I think this is definitely a book you'll really enjoy and it's definitely worth picking up um, much like Black Science which after two issues has got me hooked and I'm bored this issue has got me hooked and I'm bored and I'm looking forward to issue three and I give A Voice in the Dark issue number two five stars Next, from Marvel Comics, we have the Superior Spider-Man, issue number 24, which has part three of Darkest Hours. And wow, this issue just came out of left field. I've been enjoying this book, but this issue, wow. Um, the story's all coming together. All the different threads are starting to come together. The whole Goblin storyline, uh, Carly trying to get evidence on Spidey, Mary Jane. Um, all the different elements are starting to come together, which is really cool. Um, there was a really great development with Flash that I'm really pleased at, and I'm hoping that, that that's going to mean he's going to be Venom for the long term, um, if he survives this story arc. I love the whole thing with Doc Ock, the arrogance of thinking that he could control the symbiont where Parker failed, that he's stronger world than Parker, and that he can... It just is so Doc Ock, that arrogance is always his downfall, and I like that we've had that consistently throughout the book. I'm also really liking the relationship with him and Anne-Marie. I think that's a really nice, and even though it's going to mean Heartbreak Hotel for her, I really do like where that, that relationship, and that it just shows that he's not an evil person. It's just his arrogance um, a lot of the time, because he's not, like, evil, like Doctor Doom evil. Um, he's just, his morals are a bit shady, and he, he's, his arrogance really is his main downfall. Uh, the, the cliffhanger at the end, oh my god, I was just in a geekasm. Uh, it was awesome. And I was really, really psyched for the 25th issue. I can't believe, on a side note, I can't believe that, like, the first issue of this didn't come out until January. And here we are in December, and we're already on issue 24. And that's like, if you count the annual as well, that's 25 issues of Superior Spidey we've had this year. Oh, and then you've got, uh, did they do um, an Age of Ultron issue as well? So that's like maybe 26 issues of, of Superior Spider-Man we've had this year. Uh, like, yunks, that is a lot. Um, and that's an insane schedule. But all in all, I'm really enjoying this book. Dan Slott, Christos Gage are on top form here. And yeah, uh, the story is just really strong, really coming together good. And it gives Superior Spider-Man issue number 24, five stars. Next we have Saga, issue number 17. Um, I'm just loving this book. Every issue, I just go inside my Saga bubble and just enjoy each issue. Um, and the whole world just stops while I read the book. It is just brilliant. This issue very much like Superior Spider-Man. All the characters are beginning together. All the plot threads are beginning to come together, which was really cool. There were some crazy developments. Um, as we, we kind of we jumped to where we ended in issue 12, we are now, we've jumped... After having those issues where we went back to see the build up to that, we've now reached that point again. And and yeah, this issue is just crazy insane. Uh, some really shocking things happen. And as always, nobody is safe in this book. And I'm really intrigued to see where we're going to go next. As always, the, the art from Fiona Staples, I, I just find so brilliant. The amount of emotion she gets into characters, even characters with one eye, is just tremendous. Um, yeah, this just remains an absolute joy for me, an absolute must for me to buy every month, and I give Saga issues number 17 another big stunking five stars. So finally this week from Marvel Comics we have Uncanny Avengers issue number 15, and of all the books, this was the book I was most anticipating this week. Um, last issue was just tremendous, and where it set us up at, I was like... Yeah, I, I was super excited about this one, and it didn't let me down. Loads of developments are going on in here. Uh, we get to find out what the Apocalypse Twins' is, plan is, all the, what's going on with Jamboa, and why they killed that Celestial. All that kind of starts making sense, and the story's really coming together uh, in a fantastic way. Um, and yeah, I'm just really enjoying the book. There is one bit with the art. The art is good. But there's one bit where they change inkers for a few page pages, and you can really tell the difference as the the the, the other inker kind of inks it a bit heavier. 
Um, I, and it's something that I've never really, it's something I always really tend to overlook. I notice like a good colorist or good art, but when, when with the inkers, I don't always appreciate how much of a difference they make on a book. So um, it really brought that home to me that how it is just as important you have the inker you have to how your art looks. And, and sometimes maybe we blame the artists um, when art doesn't look good and maybe it's the inker, you know? Um, so yeah, that was something that this year brought on. But overall, though, I just really enjoyed this issue. Really, really good. Um, I love where Remender's going with this book, and I'm really excited to get the next issue and to see what's next. And I give Uncanny Avengers issue number fifteen five stars. one word wow um that was the best episode of arrow i've seen ever um usually I, I i my big thing is i like to keep my reviews spoiler free um generally i just like to kind of let you know what i think about it without kind of really delving into it too deep because i don't want to spoil it i just want to kind of maybe entice you to try something out what I don't want it, you to know everything that happens in it and it spoils it so there's no reason for you to get it um, that, that's not my bag but this is going to be the hardest review I've ever done because there's so much happened in this episode that I don't want to spoil for you all if you haven't seen it but yeah this is a must see episode uh, if you're a DC fan this is a must see episode so much uh, we get stuff on the island we get a major character death on the island we get to see how that's affecting stuff in the in present day. Uh, we get to see the main villain behind Brother Blood and what's going on there. And how come this thing from the island has ended up in Starling City. We, we get to um, a major character origin story to see a potential new hero. Uh, we get a mention of Solomon Grundy. We, we get to see... Um, Holly, after really, after really being beaten up last time by Cyrus Gold, really taking it to Cyrus, and can he kind of come back? Oh, just so much happened in this one. Uh, the thing as well that the episode's called Free Ghosts, and the thing that really struck me is it's the episode before Christmas, for the mid-season break before Christmas, and it's like um, it always reminded me of uh, Christmas Carol because Scrooge gets visited in that by Free Ghosts. And in this episode, Ollie gets visited by three ghosts. And I just kind of wondered how much of that was a coincidence and how much was that kind of like a planned kind of link it into Christmas kind of deal. Um, I don't know. But um, yeah, this, 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 this season has just been so brilliant. They have took what they did last season and they've built on it so brilliantly. And this, this show has just got me hooked. Um, as fans of like the comics... You just like constantly geeking out at different stuff. I was just in a total geekasm through the whole episode. My wife kept looking at me like, "What's wrong?" Because I kept geeking out at different stuff. I'm like, oh. and and she was like, Whoa, "What? What's wrong?" And uh, it was just brilliant, 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 brilliant. I really enjoyed this episode. If you're a fan of any any way of DC Comics, this is an episode you need to go and watch because it was just superb. Um, we have to wait now here in the UK till February. We don't get this show back. I think in the States, you get it back in January. But I, I think um, because often you have like kind of little weeks off here and there. And I think probably uh, what the TV channel over here, they like to show it all in one go. So I think probably the kind of thought pattern is to build up a few episodes and we can get it every week. So when it comes back, my reviews will be, be will seem like they're late. But it's just on the UK transmission. But yeah, this show's just been brilliant this season. And I give Arrow, episode 9 of season 2, Three Ghosts, I give it a definite big stunking 5 stars. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the end of my video. You have survived the reviews. You have, have come through unscathed through the Arrow review. And you have reached the good stuff. Um, unfortunately, there's not that much good stuff in the week, and it's not because there's not good stuff out there. It's just it's I've been really busy with Christmas. Um, now I'm married, you know, I've got more family to kind of go and see and deliver presents to. So it's been a busy week this week, kind of getting that kind of all done. So I just haven't had as much time, kind of to, you know, to catch up on stuff. Um, 
and however there has been good stuff um i did my first ycc covers video which i really enjoyed and i got a lot of really great feedback for it which i'm really grateful for uh, definitely be doing a lot more of them. Um, I've also been watching some YCG covers videos. Now I know what they are. Uh, I've been watching them and that's been a lot of fun. Um, so that's been kind of cool. Um, I'm definitely like, um, like one of my like things for next year is I would really love to take part in one of these hangout videos. I don't know how I go about doing getting involved in one of them and I don't know whether or not I need like um, like headphones and stuff a microphone from for, for my cam because my camera's built into my laptop and I don't know do I you know I, I know in the past when I've gone on things where you talk to people that I haven't had sound um, so I don't know but yet when I record my videos it picks up the sound fine so I don't know um, I may need to get a microphone but de definitely one of my new year's resolutions is going to be at some point in the year as socially awkward as I am is to get involved in a hangout video even if I just do one you know that will satisfy me um, I don't know who I want to watch it but <laughs> it'd be great to take part in one of those hangouts with a group of people that would be cool um, so yeah but anyway the YCC covers videos are great if you don't know what they are please just t type in YCC covers uh, into YouTube and you'll get a bunch of videos and you'll you'll be able to find out what they are um, Other than that I thought there was the Planet of the Apes trailer for the new film Dawn of the Planet of the Apes which looks good um, Looks like it's going to be like the downfall of humanity this one um, More than the rise of the apes um, so It's going to be interesting how they do it um, I, I loved the original Planet of the Apes films uh, My favourite two were Planet of the Apes and Escape from Planet of the Apes uh, but the problem with the films was that they always looked to, to finish them off. So they had to come up with a way to bring them back every time because they'd kill them all off. Um, and also, the thing is each film they got a smaller budget. And, and that's very difficult to make a film like Planet of the Apes on a smaller budget. Um, you know, and I think it, it, it works much better if, if you kind of are planning, yeah, we're going to do a sequel and then a sequel, then a sequel. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm hoping that, you know... I'm looking forward to seeing where this is, this series of films are coming. I'm looking forward to that. This looks like there's going to be some good films next year. I think you've got uh, Spider-Man 2 and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. So there's two films I know. I think the Robocop's coming out as well, which I'm excited for. So I think there's come some quite good films. There's a couple more Marvel films, aren't there? I think we got like the Captain America Winter Soldier movie that looks good. Um, I'm, I think we got Ant is it Ant-Man and Guardians of the Galaxy or both next year? Do we get both of them or one of them? Um, so yeah, there's some good stuff to come next year, film-wise. Um, comic book wise, I'm definitely seriously thinking about picking up Avengers number 24. It's a brand new jumping on point as they finished all the stuff going on there. And it's a new jumping on point as to start kickstart their uh, all new Marvel Now range of books. Um, I, I, I dropped Avengers. Avengers has always been one of my favourites, but I dropped it because I just did not like what Hickman was doing with it. The story itself was good, and if it was any other book, I would have really loved it. but because it was Avengers and Avengers were rarely in it or really a big part of the story and there was no real character development and you didn't really get to know the characters, you had this massive team but we wasn't really getting to know a lot of the people and I just found it very frustrating and ended up, ended up dropping it. It, it it's like if you go to a restaurant and you, you, you want a vegetarian meal and you've really got your mindset you're going to have a vegetarian meal and they bring you out fried chicken now it doesn't matter if that fried chicken is the best fried chicken you've ever had you want a vegetarian meal and you're not going to be happy with a, a chicken meal because that's not what you want that's not what you've expected um, so I I'm very much feel the same way about the Avengers book but I'm giving Hickman another go uh, they've got Avengers World coming out as well which I'm going to try out um, so yeah so a couple of new books I'll be trying out in the next few weeks um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for today, really. Uh, those are things on my mind. Uh, those are the good stuff that I've got so far. Um, all that leaves me to say is, is I'd like to send a big, massive uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. Uh, not just who's part of the YouTube Campbell community, but everybody who, who might be watching this. Um, a Merry Christmas. Hope you all have a great one. Um, I will be back. I will be back. I will have a YCC video and probably a graphic novel review up and those will be the last videos I'll do until after Christmas um, I will not be back until afterwards I will have some point next weekend 
uh, the weekend after Christmas I'll have my review video up it's going to be a bit different next week because we have no hour review and we'll only have four books to review so I might try and find something else to kind of fill out the video uh, but we will see um, anywho, uh, thank you very much for watching I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas uh, I've been Jason the Dude this has been Dude's Comic Book Goodness Bye for now.